After a Canadian Grand Prix filled with differing strategies and great on-track racing, Formula 1 moves from North America back to Europe for the Austrian Grand Prix, which means that once again it is time for my preview and predictions. This is a series where I'll be previewing, and then at the end of the video I'll be giving out my early predictions for the upcoming Grand Prix. Now, let's get to the video. As usual, I'll be talking about Ferrari, Aston Martin, Mercedes and Red Bull a little bit later on, so stick around for that. As mentioned, Montreal delivered a fantastic race with plenty of varying strategies and there was a lot of great racing for us the fans to enjoy and luckily for us, Formula 1 is moving from a circuit that a fan loves to another circuit that the fans love which typically produces great racing and that is the Red Bull Ring. The circuit is not only a great track for racing and overtaking but in terms of reliability, it is a punishing circuit as cars tend to break at this track due to the layout of the circuit and also the power unit is put through its paces and can be heavily punished. Just ask Ferrari as Sainz found out last year when his car went up in smoke. The layout features plenty of decent straights with some heavy braking zones which allows for great overtaking which is what we have seen throughout the years. It is easy for drivers to make mistakes and we see that yearly, especially in qualifying. Last year Lewis Hamilton found the wall during qualifying as did his teammate George Russell as the cars get very close to their limits around this short technical circuit. Pirelli will be taking the C3, C4 and C5 compound of tyres meaning that it will be the softest in the Pirelli range which is the same as what they took to Montreal as well as last year's Grand Prix. These tyres typically get punished around this short circuit as there is very little room for the tyres to actually get a breather. Also, due to the circuit being a good track for overtaking, we typically get to see multiple pit stops and we saw last year there was a total of 43 pit stops, meaning that we got to see a mixture of 2 and 3 pit stop strategies. Due to how easy it is to overtake at the Red Bull Ring, I have a feeling we may see another mixture of 2 and 3 pit stop strategies, especially for the teams that are harder on their tyres, such as the Haas team. It is also the return of the sprint weekend, meaning that there will be two qualifying sessions, one sprint race and one Grand Prix, meaning that for the teams they will only have one 60 minute practice session in which they can set their cars up for the weekend. This was the same as last year which led to Red Bull being somewhat underprepared for the Grand Prix and that meant that their tyre wear was actually higher than they had anticipated which of course led to more pit stops. We may see something similar again this weekend and the question will be will any team be able to jump on the misfortune of Red Bull if they are harder on their tyres. As mentioned overtaking at the Red Bull ring is relatively easy when compared to other circuits. And we can see that as last year there was a total of 67 on track overtakes making it the race with the 5th highest all year long. To help with overtaking the Red Bull ring features 3 DRS zones to help with of course more overtaking. The first DRS zone is down the pit straight into turn 1. The next DRS zone is on the exit of turn 1 and on the run into turn 3. And the final DRS zone is on the exit of turn 3 and all the way down into turn 4. This means that there are 3 DRS zones simultaneously all close together. And this makes the DRS zones very potent and it will be perfect for cars that are very efficient with their DRS systems. As mentioned the circuit has the lowest lap time of the year and last year's pole position time was a 1 minute 4.984 by Max Verstappen in the Red Bull and the fastest lap in the Grand Prix was a 1 minute 7.275 also by Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. This lap was set towards the end of the Grand Prix after he made his third and final stop. The time could potentially be beaten if a driver opts to box towards the end of the race similar to how Perez did in Montreal. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video I would greatly appreciate it if you comment, leave a like and subscribe for more F1 content. The majority of viewers are not currently subscribed to the channel and if you are one of those I would greatly appreciate it if you just tap the little sub button. Now let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 4 teams and let's start with Ferrari. For Ferrari, the Canadian Grand Prix was a major step forward as the team nailed the strategy call during the Grand Prix which is a rarity for them. Not only this, but Ferrari had great race pace 
and it was the most impressive race pace performance by the team since Baku. The team had potential for scoring a podium, but a disastrous qualifying session put an end to that. For Ferrari, Montreal was a strong weekend, and the circuit was one of the better circuits for their car. In some ways, Austria and the Red Bull ring should be another circuit in which the team benefits from, as the circuit should suit them yet again. Austria is also the site of the last Ferrari victory from the 2022 season, and the team will be looking to find a way to get themselves back on the podium. Luckily for them, with the way that the circuit is, with its long straights and high-speed sections, it should suit their car, which is a very efficient car when it comes to downforce. For Charles Leclerc, Canada was an improved performance after a very difficult Spanish Grand Prix. His and Carlos Sainz's race pace was very similar, as this graph shows. It will be interesting to see if they can continue to build on this and score their second podium of the season. For Aston Martin, Canada was a great result for Fernando Alonso, and it was a circuit that played into their strengths due to the Aston Martin being strong in the chicanes and through the corners such as the hairpin, as Aston Martin typically gets good exits due to the car having decent mechanical grip, which you can see when looking at the fastest laps of Fernando Alonso and comparing that to Lewis Hamilton, for example. For Aston Martin, Austria could be an interesting race, and I don't think they will be as strong at this race. Aston could get some good exits from corners such as Turn 1, Turn 3 and Turn 4, which will benefit them nicely. However, Austria is also filled with some higher speed corners in the second half of the track, and this is where Aston Martin falls off just a little bit in terms of pace. The higher speed corners was where they were losing out in Barcelona, and this could be an issue for them this weekend. Not only this, the Red Bull ring also features plenty of straights, and Aston Martin is still one of the slower cars in a straight line. Albeit they are better than where they were at the early stages of the season, it has to be said. Canada had plenty of straight sections, for example, and they were still fast. However, Montreal doesn't feature any high-speed corners, really. For Fernando Alonso, it could be a bit more of a tricky weekend, and the team may be struggling to fight for the podium, and the team may be waiting until Silverstone for when their new upgrades arrive. For Lance Stroll, it is very important that he finds a way to score a good number of points after having a few difficult weekends. For Mercedes, the Canadian Grand Prix was another improved race for the team since they upgraded the car, as Lewis Hamilton was taking the fight to Fernando Alonso and George Russell looked like he was in with a shout of being involved too, until he hit the wall. This seems to be another race which the car will be performing very well at, I expect, and I have a feeling that the Austrian Grand Prix will be a strong race for the improved team as they continue their fight back towards the front of the field. The reason I think it will be a strong race for the team is the same reason why I think it will be a bit more tricky for Aston Martin. The Red Bull ring features some high speed corners which should suit their car very nicely based on what we saw in Barcelona. They are also better in a straight line compared to the Aston Martin team and it will be very close between the two teams because I think Aston Martin will be stronger on the exit of some corners and get good runs out of corners but through the higher speed parts and further down the straights is where Mercedes will come on strong. You can see how Mercedes are faster through the higher speed sections when we look back to the Spanish Grand Prix and compare the fastest laps of Lewis Hamilton to Fernando Alonso. For the Red Bull team, they are heading to their home race on a high after winning every single race so far this year, and honestly, I would be surprised if they did not win again this weekend. For Max Verstappen, he is in incredulous form, and really the only thing I can see stopping him from winning again this weekend is if the Red Bull Ring's notoriously harsh curbs damage the car in some way and stop him from being able to maximise the potential of that Red Bull. Verstappen is in another world when compared to his teammate, which you can see when looking at the race pace between Perez and Verstappen last time out. Even then, it is questionable as to how hard Max was actually pushing. The Red Bull Ring will be another track that suits them nicely and will suit them a little bit more than Montreal, which was the toughest race so far for the team. 
So with that in mind, what are my predictions for qualifying and the main Grand Prix? Well, for pole position, I am going to go for Max Verstappen as usual. Unless there is any weather, then I think Verstappen should get another pole relatively easy. And for the top five in the race, I am going to go for him P5 to be Charles Leclerc, P4 will be George Russell, P3 will be Fernando Alonso, P2 will be Lewis Hamilton, and Max Verstappen will win the Austrian Grand Prix. And the top midfield driver, I think, will be Alex Albon in the Williams. But that is what I think. The question is, though, what do you guys think? Let me know down below, and as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.